Hey, Dr. Osborne here, and today I wanna to discuss three very weird causes of low thyroid function or hypothyroidism. Now, make sure you stay with me to the very end of this video because some of these things I'm gonna be talking about are things you're probably doing every day and nobody else has told you that they could be linked to your thyroid problem. So stay with me all the way to the end. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button below if you haven't already so that you can get updates from us on a regular basis. Let's get into it. The three very weird causes of hypothyroidism. Cause number one, coffee. Now I'm gonna put up a link here and I'm gonna put up an image of a research study that just kind of helps you to understand and corroborate this information a little bit better. But in this particular study, what we found on coffee and autoimmunity, very simply is that coffee intake led to a decrease and the absorption of thyroid medication. Now, although coffee in this case is not causing the thyroid disease itself, it's contributing to a reduction in your ability to absorb the medication. So if you've been diagnosed with hypothyroidism and your doc's got you on Levoxy or thyroxine, you know, the, the uh, thyroid medication, the T4 preparations, that coffee has actually been shown to reduce the absorption of that. So if you're that one cup of coffee in the morning person and you're using that coffee to wash down your thyroid medication, you might want to reevaluate that drink choice at least while you're taking that medicine. So understand that. Now a couple of other things about coffee that I want you to understand because there's some other compelling research on coffee contributing to autoimmune disease. There's some studies that show that coffee can actually mimic gluten. And of course, we know that gluten can contribute to a low thyroid. So coffee can mimic gluten in some cases. If you're drinking instant coffee, for example, instant coffees oftentimes are contaminated with wheat-based ingredients or they're sweetened with barley-based ingredients. So you've gotta be real careful if you're using an instant coffee mixture because of the gluten component in the coffee. Now, now, additionally, you should understand that coffee, the caffeine, depending on how much you're drinking, the caffeine in coffee can actually be an irritant to the GI tract. And so sometimes what happens with thyroid autoimmune disease, it started in the gut, meaning that you can develop a situation or a condition known as leaky gut. Coffee can help perpetuate leaky gut. So many people with autoimmune thyroid disease, particularly like Hashimoto's or Graves' disease, you wanna be real careful with the coffee intake because if your gut's already irritated, coffee can just continue to keep it irritated and prevent a leaky gut from ever being able to heal. So coffee, again, can be a contributor. Now there are a few other things that you wanna know about caffeine in the coffee. Number one, caffeine's a diuretic. And so why is that important? Because many of the nutrients that your thyroid thyroid gland needs to properly function, okay, are water soluble. So if caffeine is causing you to pee out more of your, let me give you a few examples, magnesium, and that's what caffeine has been shown to do. It's been shown to cause magnesium loss in the urine and B vitamin loss in the urine. So if you're drinking a lot of excessive caffeine, not even just coffee, but you know, even including teas and energy drinks and other beverages with caffeine in them, then that could potentially be causing micronutritional deficiencies that can contribute to a dysfunction of your thyroid gland. So the, the caffeine can be a big part of that. Now caffeine can also overstimulate your adrenal glands and that can lead to a change in thyroid output. So you've gotta be careful if you've got Hashimoto's and you're drinking coffee on a regular basis and the medicine's maybe not working as well as you thought it was supposed to, your energy's still low and you're still struggling with the symptoms of hypothyroidism, you might wanna take a look at that coffee and try removing it for a few months and seeing if you don't just notice some improvements. Now, many of you may be putting something in your coffee right, that also can potentiate or contribute to autoimmune thyroid disease. Let's talk about that for a moment. There's a recent study that was just published, I'll put that up for you. Autoimmune thyroiditis with hypothyroidism induced by sugar substitutes. So if you're adding that pack of artificial sweetener to your coffee, this is maybe a double hit for you. But what we already know is that excessive use of artificial sweeteners have been linked to 
uh, obesity and been linked to blood sugar disruption. So even though they're supposed to be low calorie, no calorie sweeteners, they, we know they can actually contribute to problems. But in addition, many animal studies report that artificial sweeteners affect the immune system. And some studies show that the, the artificial sweetener sucralose, because it's chlorinated, diminishes the thyroid function. We'll talk about why in just a minute, so stay with me. Now, the, the research on this area, there was a recent case study that was published where a woman had severe hypothyroid autoimmune problems and she was a heavy, heavy user of sucralose, aka Splenda, right? And so what happened when the doctors suspected that and they removed that Splenda from this woman's diet, her thyroid antibodies improved dramatically. So again, if you're pouring that Splenda into your coffee and you're struggling with a thyroid problem, not only can the coffee be an issue, but the Splenda can be an issue. Now let's dive in a little bit deeper. I'm gonna put an image up here for you on why Splenda, particularly Splenda, can be a problem for hypothyroid. Splenda is chlorinated sugar. That means what they did with Splenda is they replaced hydro uh, hydroxyl ions with or molecules with chlorine instead. So it's got chlorine embedded in the molecule. Now understand that chlorine competes with iodine. Why is that important to know? Iodine is the substance that your thyroid gland needs. It's a mineral that your thyroid needs in order to produce the active thyroid hormone T4. As a matter of fact, the four in T4 is representative of how many molecules of iodine are present. So taking in high doses of Splenda where you're adding all this excessive chlorine into the diet, know that chlorine competes with iodine to get into your thyroid gland to properly be able to produce T4. So this is what scientists believe is happening is that when you're taking in that chlorinated sugar, it's actually competitively inhibiting your thyroid's ability to absorb iodine. So again, you've got to be real careful there. Now, beyond that, you should also be looking at other potential sources of chlorine, not just Splenda, but you know, if you don't filter your drinking water, understand that your drinking water's got chlorine in it. It's a very, very major source uh, of chlorine for most people in their diet. So make sure you're also filtering your drinking water if you want your thyroid to be healthy. Now, the third trigger, the third we'll say weird, although today it's becoming more and more mainstream, is gluten. Gluten sensitivity. Gluten has now been shown to contribute to thyroid antibody formation. As a matter of fact, there have been a number of studies. Uh, one I'm gonna put up on the board for you here. Uh, 22 patients, in essence, almost uh, in this particular study, there were a number of patients that were studied, more than 400 people were studied, and of those 400 with autoimmune thyroid disease, 22 of them had uh, positive antibodies to gluten. So again, if you've been diagnosed with hypothyroidism but haven't had gluten sensitivity ruled out as a potential factor, you know, it's important that you do because in the, again, in this research study, 5.5% of patients actually had gluten antibodies as being a trigger factor in their thyroid condition. So you wanna make sure that you ask your doc if you've got that diagnosis to evaluate you for a potential for gluten sensitivity. Now, that's not the only study. There've been a number of studies published on thyroid disease and gluten. I'm gonna show you another one here. This one's important to understand because many of you may already know this connection. You may have already gone gluten-free sometimes, right? So a lot of you go gluten-free, but on the weekends you, you throw in a little gluten, you cheat a little bit here and there. In this particular study published in the Journal of Clinical Gastroenterology, what the, the, what the researchers found is that the serological markers uh, for thyroid or antibodies were present with gluten exposure. And in order to minimize those antibodies, in other words, to normalize that person's immune system so that it quit attacking the thyroid, the person had to be on a very strict gluten-free diet for six months. And that if exposure happened before that, the antibodies wouldn't come down. So this study shows that, again, gluten can elevate the inflammatory antibodies that attack your thyroid for as long as six months. So, you know, an exposure to gluten can potentially create an inflammation response for as long as six months. So you don't want to cheat on the weekends. You don't want to add a little bit here and there because half the year, is, is toast is the way your thyroid is concerned if you're getting those exposures. So again, let's back up. 
coffee, Splenda or, or chlorinated sugar, and gluten are all known triggering factors for autoimmune thyroid disease that you need to be aware of, especially those of you who already have that diagnosis. Make sure you go talk to your doc about helping you understand whether or not gluten could be playing a role in that. And if you think gluten might be your problem, look, I've got a quiz, a link to a quiz you can take. No charge, just want you to take the quiz. It'll help you to understand whether going gluten-free is a right move for you. Because again, if it's contributing to your thyroid problem, you certainly want to know about it. Hey, if you want more information about what you can do to naturally support healthy thyroid function, check out this video here and this video here. A lot of great information for you. And also, share your experience or your comments below. Look, if you've gone gluten-free already and your thyroid has improved, share that with our community. Look, your story might help change or save somebody else's life. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.